Hi everyone, in today's video let's understand what is a comparative research design study. So in a comparative research design study there can be an experiment research design study or a non-experiment research design study. So let's understand both with a simple and easy to understand example. So what happens in a comparative research design study? So in a comparative research design study if it is an experiment based then you will have the same number of groups as the treatment that you have designed for. Let's say that you have a classroom full of students and you want to experiment the effectiveness of three different teaching models, teaching model A, B and C on the students and understand or investigate the effectiveness of each of these teaching models. Uh, so you will divide the classroom into three groups which are randomly designed or randomly assigned the students to it and then you first gather a baseline data. This baseline data can be based on the existing knowledge of a topic among the students. Let's say you are trying to teach the students algebra in maths, right? So you first get a baseline data. What is their knowledge of algebra in maths currently? That could be based on a test that could be based on um, uh, just question answer asking the students about their knowledge and then uh, you get a baseline data you divide the classroom into three random groups and then you adopt the three teaching models for the three groups so the teaching model a could be a practical based uh, teaching model teaching model b could be classroom study based teaching model three could be uh, showing videos of calculations and then once you understand or once you feel that the effectiveness of the intervention or the teaching model has been um, effective and it has taken place um, and you gather a post intervention or a post experiment data uh, after the teaching model has been used to teach the students you gather data about the new knowledge of algebra among the students and then you do a comparison uh, between the baseline data that was collected before the intervention and the new data that you have collected after the intervention after the teaching model was adopted and then you see that any change in the knowledge will be purely based on the fact that you adopted a teaching model and then you can see which of the teaching models was the most effective so you could have a test that you conduct uh, before the teaching model is adopted and then you have a test which is conducted after the teaching model is adopted and then you can see which of the student has scored the most so that way you will see that which group has scored the most and which of the teaching model was most effective now this is the experiment kind of a comparative research design I remember there will always be those extraneous variables uh, that will influence the study because the groups were randomly assigned. So there could be uh, extraneous variables where uh, the gender of uh, the student would be uh, uh, Im impacting the study or the prior knowledge or uh, ability to work with calculators or maybe some kind of um, uh, uh, students who have uh, gained knowledge from other schools who were transferred in this school so these are the extraneous variables which can influence the study and you have to recognize these extraneous variables acknowledge them in your study that these could be playing a part in enhancing the knowledge of the students or some of the students could have maths support at home they could be having maths tuitions or their parents are very good at maths so these are the extraneous variables which may be influencing the study in some way or the other and you have to recognize it now you can also have a non-experiment comparative research design where you don't have to actually um, gather any baseline data so that baseline data can be gathered by uh, after the treatment is administered so you could have a classroom full of students just divide them into three groups uh, three assigned groups the assumption here is that if the three groups are comparative then the baseline data will be comparative as well so for example if you have chosen to um, uh, gather knowledge about algebra among grade 5 students uh, you kind of assume that because they are grade 5 students maybe none of them have been taught algebra before until grade 4 so grade 5 their knowledge of algebra will be pretty much the same i don't need to gather any baseline data or you can say that i am going to uh, ask them post experiment so after the teaching model has been adopted 
after their uh, new knowledge of algebra has been assessed i can just ask them as to whether they uh, thought they could have solved these problems before the teaching model was adopted or not so you don't gather a baseline data you just ask the students that uh, would you be able to have been able to solve this question before i adopted the teaching model so they could say yes or no so that way you get a baseline data so that is a non experiment kind of a comparative research design at the end of the day you have to choose the number of treatments in here the number of treatments for the different teaching models you divide the groups accordingly the groups are randomly assigned so the extraneous variables also play a role which you have to identify and then you gather data to see the effectiveness of the treatment on each of this group so in the experiment one you have a baseline data that you gather in the not experiment one gathering a baseline data is not the focus uh, you can use um, uh, prior knowledge you can just ask the participants about their baseline data after the treatment has been administered or uh, you can uh, just assume that it was very similar considering that the three groups are comparative so i hope that you understood what is comparative research design study method and how you can use it for both experiment or non experiment studies uh, if there is something i missed please let me know please like comment share subscribe and i will see you soon with my next video bye for now